Our next presenter is Dr. Daniel Lee. He serves as the academic dean for Fuller Center for Asian American Theology and Ministry. I have a lot more to say about him, but um, want to give that time to him instead to present a, from the theological perspective on this topic. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Um, hope you can all hear me. Um, so uh, I want to thank um, uh, Dr. David for the presentation. I think Asian Pacific American context uh, routinely erases brown Asian Americans and especially Filipino Americans. So, and routinely practices uh, East Asian supremacy. So uh, it's so important to kind of uh, highlight and I'm so glad that we can actually highlight uh, Filipino American context in this particular time. Um, and also I, I think what I really kind of took away from that is this idea of uh, internalized racism and colonial mentality being rooted in history. The fact that if we understand what's happening, we have to understand history well. And if we erase that history, then it's literally incomprehensible. So it's so helpful in that sense. Um, I would like to offer uh, particular ways in which Asian American Christians have internalized racism and how our theological minds are colonized with white supremacy. Uh, my comments will focus on liberating language and how we decolonize our minds. And by language, I don't mean Asian languages, although I believe affirming Asian languages is important. What I mean by language is the cultural contextual literacy, the lexicon by which we understand our world. Now, the field of cognitive linguistics tells us that our experience is processed through a linguistic framework. Language, words, and concepts uh, help us describe and interpret our past and present experiences, but also help us to construct and, 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 uh, and construct and kind of generate our possible futures. Uh, Women's activist and writer, uh, Audrey Lloyd, who famously said that master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. And in the same vein, when Asian American Christians use white normative or white centric language to understand themselves, we will never be free from internalized racism. Um, now, the issue here is that for so many Asian American Christians and Asian Americans overall, having an Asian American uh, cultural literacy is, is a serious problem. That Asian American studies simply have not really impacted our, our culture in general and also secondary education system. Therefore, you can be very well educated at the same time, not really have a nuanced language to articulate the Asian American experience. So it's really led to kind of a widespread um, erasure of Asian Americanness and also ignorance by all about Asian American context. Like when I teach about Asian American experience at Fuller, most students know more about black history than Asian American history. And then even then, I mean, it's very limited as well. So I think it's really important the fact that we have language to articulate uh, how to kind of take a, uh, take hold of the Asian American experience. In that sense, I want to ex ex present three different examples of colonizing concepts that I've seen in Asian American Christian circles. Uh, I think some of this stuff will actually applies to broadly Asian Americans, but I definitely have seen this uh, in Asian American circles. And the first point is the exclusion of race as a category. For many conservative Christians, there's an exclusion of race when uh, uh, you, using exclusion of race uh, as a concept when, uh, when they're trying to understand their experience. The focus ends up purely on Asian heritage or ethnicity or migration. Uh, I think for perpetual foreigners that Asian Americans often end up being labeled as, why would race matter when race is an American original sin and we're not even American? So race isn't given to us by society as a way to understand ourselves. This exclusion of race for Asian Americans can happen right over, you know, it happened right over in Fuller Seminary as well. Early Asian American initiatives for Japanese Americans and Chinese Americans were put under School of World Missions under missiage and culture. And in that sense, it was focusing on, on culture as literally foreigners living in the US and not really Asian Americans who actually understand the racial dynamic as well. When we start working on the latest iteration of Asian American program, which is we've been working on for now last 11 years, Fuller as an institution had a really difficult time to understand what is Asian Americans. I mean, I can kind of recall a lot of pretty, like a bad racist TV show kind of, uh, you know, experiences where people would say, so Asian American, tell me what that really means. Are you talking about Chinese or Japanese or 
Koreans and Chinese, because I don't understand what Asian American means. And this actually happened earlier on in my experience of building the Asian American Center at Fuller, because this idea of a racialized experience for Asian Americans ends up just being a foreign thing for many people. And of course, this idea of not really having the idea of a category of race for Asian Americans plays, plays well in terms of modern minority myth, because Asian Americans have no stake in the controversial and troubling racial politics, or, or, the, or the idea is in a sense. This exclusion of race as an experiential category reflects, uh, is reflected in early uh, books and resources on Asian American evangelical spirituality and ministry, and actually often even in, in our present time. And I think in some sense, uh, certain uh, cultural psychology texts that I've observed as well kind of exclude exclude race as a category. It's almost like, well, here are how you kind of deal with Asian American, you know, Chinese Americans or Japanese Americans or Korean Americans. But the racial experience of Asian Americans overall can, can sometimes be excluded in terms of kind of cultural psychology. Uh, there's a problem when we just use ethnicity to cover our social experience. Because for Asian Americans, ethnicity and race, they both have to be used because they're talking about two different things. I mean, I might be, I mean, Dr. Davies talking about him being a, a Filipino American, but then there's also kind of a broader racial category, right? And then for me as an Asian American, there's also kind of this broader racial category. Uh, I mean, Korean American is a racial category of Asian American as well. How do we kind of acknowledge both? The fact that within my home, I might be more of a Korean American talking to my parents or whatnot, but then in the society, I'm kind of labeled as more of a broader Asian American. Um, and in that sense, I've seen a lot of people say, uh, you know, say, for example, uh, when Asian Americans, uh, the idea of Asian American silence and saying Asian Americans are silent because of our culture values, when in fact, it's not just a culture value, it's, it's kind of a, it's a racialized experience that kind of silences us. Uh, because as you know, Asian Americans in Asia are not, and Asians in Asia are not quiet. So it's not just a culture thing, it's a racialized American experience where we say, where we talk about being silent politically. Um, if we talk to the second point, um, so not being provided uh, race is actually one of the fundamental ways in which we, we internalize uh, a kind of a racism in a sense. And also I think another example is hidden racialization of shame. Uh, one of the ideas of, of, of kind of shame that comes from um, this idea of kind of genealogy roots of Western guilt versus Eastern shame, that dichotomy comes from Ruth Benedict, who basically studied Japanese culture uh, by studying Japanese Americans during World War II. And what she, what she said was, these Japanese Americans are so obsessed about other people and how other people think of them. And of course, she was literally studying Japanese Americans who basically were just put in a concentration camp for who they are. This is actually Orientalism at best, where we're trying to figure out, understand the other and trying to figure out why are they acting different? Um, one of the Chinese American students told me that when he went to China, he was surprised by the fact that, you know, uh, this idea of uh, shame that he was told all his life about how Asian Americans are, and Asian people are, he wasn't seeing that. He wasn't seeing that in China because it's a lot more complicated, right? Uh, I talk about how when we think about describing Asian Americans from the category of shame or saving face, we can really reduce the Asian American experience in such a way that it's almost like, you know, uh, talking, you know, watching uh, kind of an American TV show from, a, from an outside and saying, well, that's really about individualism. That's really about individualism. When it, but when in fact, that'd it, be ridiculous to kind of say, because when I watch K-drama, for example, I see shame, but it's a lot more complex than that, right? You can't really reduce um, a culture just to one concept. Um, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm gonna kind of uh, 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 skip down a little bit here. I mean, what I'm basically seeing in so many of Asian American students, even at Fuller, is that shame is pathologized along with so much of what it means to be Asian American. And then um, theology or psychology comes as a way of fixing the problem. And the problem with that is that psychology and theology is considered contextless. It's actually this, this, this um, contextless, cultureless thing that comes and fixes the Asian Americanness in a sense. 
how do we kind of uh, see the fact that white normativity is, is functioning in, in the discipline of psychology and theology so that we, we don't think about fixing our Asian Americanness with the discipline of psychology that often becomes white normative or theology or gospel that ends up being uh, white normative as well. Um, I think uh, what I'm gonna do is kind of uh, uh, cut out the third point about, about Confucianism. I think what I wanna say is that often for Asian Americans, how we experience race is, is, is like a parable, as I say. It's almost like we work hard, we work hard, we get into great college, we work hard, we get into great grad school, we work hard, and then we kill ourselves, and then we blame shame. There's actually no mention of racism. It's all internalized, and we blame ourselves. That's what, what's happening to Asian Americans. It's almost as though we're not really seeing the big picture. And when we use a language that's out there, that's given to us, we can actually continue on being trapped in this, in this context of internalized racism and, and colonial mentality. In summary, the adequate con contextual literacy is the key to de decolonizing the minds and our hearts and telling stories in a way that's appropriate to ourselves. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Viet Nguyen talks about the need for a narrative plenitude, addressing the, uh, addressing the problem of narrative scarcity for Asian Americans. That narrative plenitude using language appropriate to Asian Americans not only helps us to understand ourselves better, but also to imagine a more generative future for Asian Americans. Thank you. Thank you.